Hey guys, it's Aquila, and this is the Lefty Knitter Podcast, episode 209. I'll correct myself if I'm wrong. I'm sitting here, and I'm like, I get home late on certain days. Hayes has uh, activities and whatnot. <sighs> let me start. Let me, let me go back. This is a podcast. I try to record through the week. Try to. It's not always easy. And then I put it all together and throw it up on the weekends. And it's about my crafting adventure, what I'm getting into that's knitting or crochet related. So welcome, welcome dear viewers. <laughs> and welcome back to anybody who has stayed with me. So I just have a moment because um, yeah, Hayes is at an activity. Normally when she's at this activity, one of the other moms and I go for a walk. Well, raining. Also, mom not here. So, I take the opportunity right now to just talk to you guys. I have been diligently working on the same two projects, and those projects are the Ripple Camisole by Jessie May Designs, Jessie May Designs, and the Shifting Chevrons by Stephen West. So, I won't talk about the Shifting Chevrons as much. I'll get into it when I can show you the progress I made because I talked about a little bit about how I might not do all the repeats on um, that he calls for. So I'll show you right now though, because the this isn't a portable project. The shifting chevrons is not portable. It's like seven skeins of yarn. It's a lot of yarn. So let me show you I, how far I've gotten on the ripple camisole. I don't even know. I haven't looked at the pattern lately, so I'm, I'm not even sure how many inches I need to knit, but since the last time you guys saw it, I've knit that much. That's pretty good. So we took this, um, I took this as weekend knitting when we went camping. We went away and for the weekend. So I didn't get a whole lot done while camping. Well, I guess I did because you can see. Well, when there was pool time, uh, I didn't really swim. It was kind of chilly. I only got in one time. And yeah, so I got that done. I will have some things to show you. So I, I will talk a little bit when I show you those things. We went to, um, the camping trip was for Father's Day slash the knit, knit talk, public knit toxication event which was held at a winery. I can't remember the name of it. I showed you guys the flyer last week. And they had a lot of vendors. The only thing, the food at the winery was probably typical winery food. I don't know. I don't go to a whole lot of wineries. There was like charcuterie boards and like meat and cheese and hummus and whatever. Well, Hayes got super excited because they had a veggie plate. Not that she couldn't eat the hummus with the bread and the chips, but um, they had a veggie plate. It was sold out. I mean, and we weren't even there that late, but it was gone. So that was just a little bit disappointing because that was an option. There was a food truck there, which didn't really have a whole lot of options. I guess all the options... We could have just said no meat. I just don't know how good they would have been. Either way, um, it was nice seeing quite a few vendors that I um, see in the past, like the Rising Tide was there, um, Avalon Springs Farm was there, so Karen was there. You know, I got to see quite a few people and I'll show you guys what I bought in a later clip because I don't have it with me. Um, but it was a nice day. The place was really nice and there was a lot of seating. Um, in general, there was a lot of seats and also there was a lot of shaded areas that you could bring a blanket and or bring chairs. So that was a really nice uh, feature of this event. So um, we drank some wine, we ate some snacky snacks and we hung out with peoples and that was nice. Um, so yeah, we did that very short event because I think it's only 12 to 4 or something so it's not very long of an event um, but I got to do what I wanted to do and talk to who I wanted to and buy what I wanted yeah so 
so there we go. So I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna continue to work on this. And I guess I should move my marker. All right, until I talk to you guys again. Yeah, it's, um, this month and the next month are really incredibly zany for my job. So if you notice that I might just look run down or feeling run down or tired or stressed, it's probably because I am. Uh, so bear with me. I do try to separate as much as I can and, but I mean, real life, right? I, I can't always just be like positive unicorns and rainbows. I wish I could be, but I'm not also, I'm also going to just be like, Hey, this is real life. And I'm sorry. I don't have much to show because I've been falling asleep on the couch at eight 30. <laughs> that, that's the truth right there. That's the truth. <sighs> Till the, to the next clip. Hey everybody, it's Aquila, and I already did an intro, so I don't know why I'm telling you my name again, but I feel like it's a whole new episode, only because the last clip I recorded was a week and a half ago in my car. Uh, so I need to hold myself accountable, and I apologize, and I know this isn't like my income, this isn't my job, and whatnot, but I feel like I still need to hold myself accountable to you guys who watch and to myself because if I fall off track I feel like not that I don't love doing this but I feel like if I fell off track and didn't do it for a while I might not do it for a while <laughs> and I don't want to do that because I really do enjoy the community of it all so here we are it is Sunday July 2nd yeah it's July already this this summer feels like it's just gonna fly by. Sorry, I'm like messing with my hair. I didn't dry it. <sighs> See if I can just make it kind of look manageable. I had one person comment not long ago, and I know these negative comments shouldn't stick with you, but they do. And if you're a person that puts anything out on social media, I'm sure they stick with you too. But there was a comment from someone that said like, brush your hair. I'm not like a dirty person. I brush my hair. I'm not like unkempt. I just sometimes I'm recording when I record and I'm not one to like doll myself up for this because honestly I don't doll myself up in real life and that's probably a terrible term to use like I don't in my normal life wear a lot of makeup nor do I always do my hair I mean I brush my hair and I air dry it air dries okay I've ranted enough and I apologize I'm wearing my cowboys and cold beer that's why I'm here <laughs> my daughter my oldest daughter got me this at the rodeo last time we were there and I just love it it is a crop shirt and that is not normal for me but I love it because <laughs> it's great okay I talked in the last video I was showing you uh my ripple camisole so let's just start with that because I haven't put much more progress I did move my keep my progress keeper so you guys can see how far I've gotten. Here's my yarn. Everything is getting kind of blown out. And I was there in the car. So I don't know, like an inch and a half, maybe. So I haven't not done a lot, but I haven't done a lot. I've been spinning y'all. I'm not going to show a video of that because it is the same loop bump that I've been, ha I've had on my wheel since before last Maryland Sheep and Wool or before Rhinebeck, I can't remember. And I put it on there because I was like, oh, loop is gonna be there, maybe I'll buy another bump. I have enough fiber and then I have, I bought, I bought some fiber. Only because I was spinning on my wheel. And now Tour de Fleece is here. So Tour de France is the race that's in France and the spinners of the world have now put on, they do tour de, tour de fleece. So you can join groups, you can make goals, you can like r compete. Like there's, and then there's really relaxed groups that just spin with us. I am not, I've not joined any group. I'm just spinning. And I figure if I do at least 10 minutes a day, I can start to get through this loop bump 
um, and be and and move on to something else because I feel like I have my I have the other wheel behind you um, and I feel like I'm not allowed to put something on that and that's my own restrictions that's stupid that I'm doing that to myself I guess in my head I'm a, I I don't have a lot of projects all the time on like on needles and whatnot so having something else on another wheel would probably be like why am I doing this to myself We went to knit, public knit toxication. I, I, I know I'm saying that wrong. I don't know. Okay, it's held by the fiberist. It was at a winery and it was really nice. I talked about it in the last clip. Um, but I haven't shown you my acquisitions. So first, let's show you what John bought because John bought himself a sweater quantity of yarn. So this is from our friend Melissa, Rising Tide Fiber Company. He bought this like it's really blowing out it's not as bright it's definitely more um muted turmeric color um she calls it sandbar sandbar and john these are dk it's tweed it's 231 yards and i think he has seven of them so he wants a cardigan so i need to make him a cardigan another cardigan I should say he's gotten one but he wants another so this one I might try to find a simple cardigan that'll fit his size and then just do small cable embellishments of my own accord or maybe try to find pattern if somebody knows of a, a pattern that's like unisex or or male um, that's a cardigan that already has some cables, not a ton. It's not my favorite. I'll do it, not my favorite. Um, put them down below for me, that'd be great. Um, Cause that's where I'm at. John also bought this bag who was next to Melissa. Does she have a tag in it or a tag? Oh, here we go. Twisted yarn fiber. I think, I wonder if this is the same people that made my David Bowie bag. I feel like it's called Twisted Yarn. Twisted Yarn and Fiber. It's a pretty beautiful bag. I love the colors in it. I love feathers. I think that's really cool. Um, and then it has a really nice thing in here to hang your some stitch markers or whatever you want. I don't think it has a pocket in the inside. And that's okay, because I use little Notions bags um, for my stuff. So it's a drawstring, which I love. And it's a pretty significant bag it's holding all seven skeins let's continue with the other things i bought while i was there and then i'll show you the progress on um what i'm working on so melissa also had these little half sock sets and uh kim from sweet pea and chickadee bought the same one and sorry i bit off you kim but i really loved this color so this is called Monet, which very reminiscent of like the water lilies pictures. And I just love a sock set. So this is a 7525, it's 231 yards, and this mini is 92 yards. So I think that's super fun. Um, so let me, oh, Shenandoah Valley Fiber Festival. So we love this fiber festival if you're local definitely look this one up. It's not until September, so you have some time to do some planning. This is a great festival. It was, um, it's gotten bigger over the years, which is fine. And it's still not gigantic enough that you feel claustrophobic, that you feel like you have to hit booths first or you won't get things. I feel like this fiber festival, um, it's just, it's got a, gr a lot of great vendors and is really low key like in the sense of i don't feel anxious when i'm there not that i'm a very anxious person but i just don't feel very anxious there um so it's in Berryville, virginia they do have classes um it's five dollar admission which i think is pretty great and then 12 and under are free and this is the one that i took my knitting machine last year to um because the night before they usually do a crank in on the stage uh, so I don't know if I'm doing that this year, but there you go. All right. <laughs> Told you I bought some fiber. 
I bought five. Okay, so I really want to try. Tammy has inspired me from Cinematic Skeins. She's been spinning a lot, and I really want to do more fractal type spinning. I, I like the look of it only because it gives like those long colorways, like striping, um, kind of how uh, spin, sp spin Cycle, uh, Yarn Hero. Uh, I heard she's bought some yarn from, oh my gosh, I can't think of the name. There's a bunch of people that now do dye in the wool. Ross Farm does it now. Um, there's a few. She just mentioned one. It's going to kill me that I can't remember it's fine. If you guys know of any other one, of the other people that do dye in the wool, put that down below because people are always looking for alternatives. Oh, Brooke from Fully Spun. Um, that's another one. People are always looking for alternatives because spin cycle is sometimes out of people's price range. And um, I know there's designers that's, that design with it, but it's just not always in the price range for people. So if you know of any other dyed in the wool companies um, that are s to the same they look similar, just, you know. So I wanna do some fractal spinning because it gives that kind of look. Uh, so I uh, bought this. This is from Shirsty. This is Kelly, she's out of Pennsylvania. So Shirsty Cat, I know I've talked about Shirsty before. I bought the BFL. Um, this was $24 for 100% BFL and it's four ounces. And look at these colors. So. I thought about breaking it out, um, but I think I'm going to do a true fractal where you split it and then you spin that half, 50% of this braid will be spun straight, just however it's dyed, and then you'll split the other half, and I know you can do it. Who just talked about this? Leslie, I believe Leslie from um, Just Not Enough Yarn, um, oh my god. I'll try to link down below. She talked about how if you fractal spin, I believe it was her, no. It might've been Andrea Mowry's last episode. I now, make, I, I've watched so much in the last couple days. Okay. If you split your other 50% just in half, you get longer color blurps, right? Because you're gonna have more fiber and it'll make a longer section of that color. If you split that 50% into four strips, you're gonna get shorter blips of that color because you have less fiber to spin of that color in that strip. Does that make sense? So if you're thinking about, if you're really getting technical and spinning for um, something specific and you know the top of your sweater uh, is smaller in circumference to start with for most people and then once you get to if you're doing like a a raglan it gets wider and then it stops and then it gets smaller again because you're putting all these sleeve stitches on hold you can do your spinning up here break up that second half of your fibers more so the stripes aren't as wide and then once you get down to here you don't have to break it up as much because it's wider down here than it was up here. I hope that makes sense. She explained it pretty well in the video. You should probably go watch her. Um, so I bought this because <laughs> I want to try some fractal spinning. That was a lot to say to... Ugh, okay. And then I went to Passion Knits. Passion Knits had stuff from their I don't know if they had other companies more than Whitney Marie Anderson. They had their stuff, and then they had some charms by Whitney Marie Anderson, which I have never had. I don't think I've had the chance to see them in person. I probably have had the chance, and maybe I just haven't seen them in that the booth that's been carrying them. So I stopped there, and I was like, ooh, uh, let me look at these, please. So... I'll show you Whitney Marie Anderson's first. These are the Sweet Neons Handcrafted Notions and Accessories. And they're like the little gummy, like gummy worms. I love these so much. Yeah, so I, I had to have these. And then, so from Passion Knits, I bought, I thought these were super cute. I mean, they're just like acrylic, right? I think they're just acrylic. But I bought both of these. They're little candies. Oh, can, are they gonna focus? Yeah. How cute are those? There's um, 
four of those. And then this one, there's three. These might end up going in a giveaway because I just thought these were, uh, they were sweet. <laughs> um, so these might go in a giveaway. I thought they were really pretty. I just thought they were really pretty. And that is everything I bought. And apparently I brought home a rock. If you have kids, you understand. All right, let me get these put away. All right, all set up for the next project, which like I said, I don't have a lot on my needles right now because I don't do that. <laughs> I just don't. This one is still attached right now because I didn't finish this color. So I am on the second strip. The last time you guys saw this, I was on the first strip. You have to ignore all the ends. They are woven with Steven, Weaven Steven. So I, I had done from here to here. So you guys saw it here where this cute little cat donut is. Okay, that's where you saw it. I ended up doing 17 stripes total instead of 21, I think. So it's still, this is the half width of the shawl, of the finish, sorry, fluffy, of the finish shawl. So you guys, I finished all of this. And then I picked up and started the second wedge. And this is where the shifting aspect comes into place because the colors shift. And I'm all the way down there. So I am pretty, pretty far on the second strip. This is going to be a longer project, I know, only because it's the same repetitive thing over and over. I mean, that's kind of what knitting is in general, but it's fine. There you go. So this is the Shifting Chevrons by Stephen West. And I really do. I like it. I like it a lot. I was, I think I said previously I was nervous about the colors. I think they're beautiful. All right. So everybody has been talking about Stephen West and his sock along because he's never done a mystery sock along. And it starts Ju July 7th. And it's called the Contrast Blast Socks. And you have to, well, you don't have to do a gauge swatch. He says, like, in the directions, um, if you're comfortable with socks and you're comfortable with um, your own feet and the yarn you're using, you know, go for it, right? So I followed his advice, though, and I did do a gauge swatch. I'm not quite done. I want to make it a little bit longer to get a better measurement. Now, it freaked me out at first because it tells you to cast on 84 stitches. And you guys can all have that information because it is, if you go to the West Knits um, Ravelry group, they're talking about um, doing their swatches and things like that. So it's not like a complete People were like, 84 stitches. Even I said it at first. 84 stitches. What sock is that? I mean, there's going to be different sizes, but it's this is just for your swatch. Just for your swatch because you, you should be doing it in the round. So these are the colors I picked. This was dyed by Holly, my friend Holly down in Hatteras. And yeah, Wildflower and Honey. Wildflower and Honey. Oh, I'll put the right name, the full name. I'm terrible. And I am not sure where I got this. It's blowing out ridiculously. Someone gifted it to me and I can't remember who. And I have an idea of two people in my head, but I don't want to like call out names. So, I mean, if it was you, just remind me. I am really bad. Like I, when I get gifted stuff, I try to put that in my Ravelry notes because for my stash, because I try to remember where it came from. So these are my two colors. I know this one has like greens and yellows in it a little bit, like poppy colors, like color pops, but I think it's gonna work out really well. So I can put this to black and white and you guys can see that. Pause and do that. All right, and then, so you are swatching. I am using my nine inch circulars. I just pulled a stitch off, so let's fix that. 
I'm not used to 84 stitches. I mean, that's a, honestly, it's a lot. But yeah, this is the outside. So it feels like a lot going on. There are like once it you definitely would want to block this section because it's these pearls and then like two stockinette rows. I mean, it's really um, stocking it all the way. You're just reversing if it's the pearl side out or the knit side out. So you have to measure, you get so many stitches, you know, so many stitches per inch. So I need to do that to see. Um, kind of where that's at. So, all right. I talked a lot, talked 20 minutes now. So I apologize was trying to keep this one short because I really haven't done a whole lot and I really feel guilty for not posting last week and keeping up with trying to record through the week. Also, I don't think anybody always wants to see me working on the same thing or cooking or doing other stuff. I don't know. Do you guys want to see that kind of stuff in my normal weekly videos? I mean, I just don't know. I'm just kind of stuck in my head right now about what I'm putting out to you all. But let's talk about what I have been watching. So anybody Sex in the City fans? Okay. I watched all the like Sex in the City when I'm pretty sure when it came out. It may not have been exactly when it came out. I can't remember, but I watched them all. I I am not a high fashion person. We can rewind to the beginning of this video. Um that is not my thing, but I guess it was just very interesting. You know, these ladies in New York, all of them were, you know, well, pretty well off in general. But man, now it's like so many years later, I can't remember what they're calling And just like that, I think is what they're calling it. I, second episode, bawling my eyes out, bawling my eyes out. And I haven't even watched these characters for like, 15 years? I mean, there was like a movie. Ball my eyes out. Anybody else? Anybody? Anybody else watching it? I, I love it. I don't, I'm obsessed. I'm, I, I can't help it. Other than that, John and I have been watching The Bear. I know I mentioned that we watched season one. Um, we're almost done season two. And let me just say that show is like high anxiety. Like there was an episode in season two where it's like family, it's like flashbacky. I, I, I just, I just, we had to stop the episode and be like, let's pick this up tomorrow. But the episode right after that is so wholesome and amazing. And there are other episodes that have really amazing, wholesome parts, but then whole next episode the whole next episode was just like, ah, melt. It was great. It was like, if we were to, like, we finished up the anxiety episode and then we watched that episode and we were like, ah, does that make sense? Okay. What I've been reading, I read The Writing Retreat by Julia Bartz. That was about um, writers who get to go on this retreat to this really infamous writer's, like, mansion and they get to have um I guess it's almost like it was advertised as a retreat where they get to have um inspiration from this writer etc etc so many twists and turns not what you think very good um also makes your makes like if you were in this situation, do you think this is how you would handle it? Maybe. I don't know. Like, I'm reading it and it's definitely giving me like, oh my God, what are they going to, what has happened? Like, that was good. I really enjoyed that. The next book I read was called The Last Word by Taylor Adams. And I don't remember where I heard this about this one from either. Um, it, you know, a lot of these books just kind of get circulated through the different podcasts and, um, shown on Instagram. So 
This was about a woman who was really, I mean, trying to escape what had happened to her in her life. And, um, yeah, that one had a lot of twists and turns. I, I can't even say she writes a review on a book that she read because she is to escape the, the, her, her life. She is just reading and reading and reading and reading and reading. And she writes this review and it's not the greatest review. And the person that wrote the book is very not okay. And so it's, it's dark. It's makes you jump. It's got a lot of twists that you don't think is going to be what it's going to be. Um, yeah. So I, I recommend that one too, if you can handle that kind of like pressure. <laughs> so the one I'm reading now is called The Reading List. Much more lighthearted. Can't remember the author's name, but much more lighthearted than the last two I read. So I have to do, I have to like switch up what I'm reading. But other than that, that is what I've been working on. I will try to show some pictures of the loop bump. I need to go and take my scale and weigh how much I've left. This was a big, I mean, the loop bumps are pretty hefty. So um, I know most braids are four ounces. I think this bump was like 5.3. So I, you know, I just feel like it's never ending. <laughs> I just need to do it every day. That's what needs to happen. So I hope everybody's well. Thank you all for sticking with my erratic schedule lately. There's no real excuses other than um, my kid was sick two, two weeks in a row with two different things. Could have been correlated, not quite sure. Pink eye, which can come from having an infection, and then the next week ended up having an ear infection, which if I was... <laughs> I apologize to the flame and fiber zoomies because I was on the zoom and I was like, I need to go check my kid. And I checked her because she was not feeling so good. And we had dosed her with some like Tylenol or ibuprofen, whatever. And I go back up to check on her again. And she's like 105. And I was like, I need to go. We're like going to urgent care right now. And it was an ear infection. She's, she's good. John's better with like poison ivy's gone, knocking on wood. Everybody's okay right now. But man, I you know, it really did it drain it drained me quite a bit just in general with not wanting to put myself out there cuz like do you want me to come on here and be like my kid's sick? I showed you, I'll show you this. This is all I've been doing. <laughs> I don't know. Like I I know you all know I am very much real life and I very much like am not afraid to tell you that like it's just been a crap week like it's been two crap cr crap weeks but there's been like highs in it too like it's not all just been crap it's been good there's been good things um but yeah th no apologies and I uh, no excuse uh, no no excuses I mean I, I apologize but I really at the same time I mean it's my life and I got to take care of other things first. And I know most of you are going to be like, cool, we get that. Thank you. You know, you got to do what you need to do. And then, I mean, it's not a curated podcast. I get it. If this was like, I put out an episode and I have to be dedicated because this is like my, this, this is my life. But at the same time, the people that do that, if like something happens in their life and they need to stop, you have to give them some sort of like breathing room just in general. It's just, I don't know. I feel like I'm doing the teeter totter here, but whatever. All right. I'm going to stop now and I hope you're as well as you can be and taking care of yourselves and your life and the things in your life because you know, right. That's, that's what it is. So until the next episode, which hopefully will be next week. <laughs> Peace, love, and happy knitting. What, which one are you doing? Cup and saucer. Cup and saucer. Cup. Tower. Eiffel Tower. Witch's broom. Witch's broom. Whoa! Cool. All right.